With this movie, we're going to learn a couple new tools. That is the Delete and the Hide Edge tool. But I want to draw a shape while we're doing it so you can pick up some additional working tips and ways to avoid some frustration as you start getting in and working with tool sets here. I'm going to draw a water glass that is partly full of water, and you'll be able to see into it. Relatively simple shapes, but it's a great way to demonstrate some of the things and how anime works. We will start with the Shape tool. I already have my style palette set to a light blue fill and a darker blue outline. Circle is selected up at the top, or I should say an ellipse. Now here's something that I haven't mentioned before. If you're on the Mac and hold down the Option key, or if you're on the PC and hold down the Alt key, you can draw a shape from the center of the cursor instead of from the top left corner. So that's what I'll do here. I'm going to come up and copy this, and then I'm going to paste it, and it will paste right dead over the top of it. I'll shift drag, hold the shift key down and drag that below so it descends immediately or straight down below it. Press the keyboard shortcut S for scale. I'll make that a little bit larger so that the glass looks halfway normal. I'm going to come back up with the point select tool, keyboard shortcut G, and just click on the center of the shape. And I want to copy and make sure I've got that one copied. It should still be on the clipboard. But now we're going to delete some edges and draw a connection between these various ellipses here. So we'll come over to the Drawing Tools palette. Keyboard shortcut D gives me the Delete Edge tool, and I'm going to delete two of these edges, and then two of the edges below. Now pressing the shortcut key A, we're going to have the Add Point tool, and here's a drawing tip. Instead of immediately starting from this point and coming down to the one below, I'm going to start slightly short of it, and then click and drag down below, but release before I get to the bottom, and then click and drag again to join it. One of the reasons I'm doing this, and I'll repeat that at the top, is that in doing this, it prevents the curvature on this point here from bowing way out, so it just saves you a little bit of time. I'll do the same thing over on this side, click and drag, release, and then I'll complete this and do the same thing at the top. Now, I copied this top ellipse. What we're going to do is just paste it back in place. And it looks like it pasted everything. No, it's just covering it up. Let's go ahead and shrink this a little bit. Keyboard shortcut S. And again, holding the Option or Alt key, I can scale this to the middle as well. So now we've got the top edge and we've got our cup. We'll do a little quick work here. Instead of redrawing any of these shapes, let's be smart and come back over here to our selection tool. I'm going to shift click the center of the cup. The ellipse is already selected. And what will happen now is I will copy and paste. Now they're in the exact same spot, so it looks like nothing has changed. Keyboard shortcut S to scale. And I'm going to make these just a little bit smaller. And then I will change the colors by clicking on the Select Shape tool. And this will help to see the difference. So on the fill here, I'm going to make it a little bit lighter and choose OK. And then the ellipse on the top, I'm going to make a lot lighter because it's more towards the top. So it'll help us see what's going on. Keyboard shortcut T for Translate, I'm going to click on this top ellipse and pull it down so it's our top level of water. Now I want to go ahead and shrink this inner shape and I'm just clicking on it with the translation tool, keyboard shortcut S for scale. I'm going to hold the Option or Alt key and scale this till the edges are just matching that. I'll click the keyboard shortcut G for our point select tool. I'll click off the object, but now I'm going to hold the shift key down and select these points going around this. With those selected, keyboard shortcut T for translate, and then I will click and drag holding the shift key and I can see I grabbed a wrong point there. So let me see if I can start over. Move that up a little bit. There we go. Overlapping shapes. Back to G for our point select. I will shift click these points and bring them down. T to translate. Now I'll hold the shift key and drag. And that comes behind this object. T for translate. I'll select this one point and drag it back down so the ellipse looks correct at the top. Now let's talk about hiding edges. What I don't want is a line right across the front here that gives away the front of this liquid. So I'm going to come over to a different tool to use in the to fill, and that's the Hide Edge tool, keyboard shortcut H. And when I click on the edge there, it will just disappear, but the fill maintains, and that's exactly what we want. 
Now on this back side, there is a bit of a stroke, and I want to make that a little bit larger. So I'll work with the width tool, click on this one individual point, and drag to the right, which will make that a little bit larger. If I want to change this so it's more like an actual meniscus, which is that funny little curve that happens when water or liquids join the side of a glass, I have to come back over to my Shape Select tool, keyboard shortcut Q. With that selected, I can go ahead and click on the stroke and say, let's make this a little bit lighter. And choose OK, and that will make that point lighter. Now, what does this look like when we're not drawing on it? Let's go ahead and do a quick render or preview. Under the File menu is the option down partway for Preview, and think of R as Render. Since I'm on a Mac, it is a Command R. If you're on the PC, it will be a Control R. It will immediately draw the scene in front of you, and you can see what your glass is looking like. Now we could come back in and start doing some gradient shading if we wanted to make this look more realistic, or maybe this is cartoony enough and it will be fine. But there's how we can work with deleting edges to create two shapes where we can join with the Add Point tool. We can go ahead and copy and paste to duplicate objects to save ourselves some drawing time. And then we can hide edges to maintain a fill, but then disguise the front edge of the object.